Hello students, it's me again. Uh, welcome back to the decentralization series. So uh, today I will discuss what is the basic idea behind decentralization. What is decentralization and what power does decentralization involve? So first I will, um, I want to give you uh, the basic, what you can say the definition of decentralization. Decentralization actually involves the transfer of several different types of political and administrative powers from a central authority to the local authority or institute. So that's the basic definition of decentralization. So what are the different kinds of decentralization? So there are several uh, different ways um, that is adopted by the central government to delegate its power or share its authority uh, with the regional or local governments or stakeholders or even uh, with private sectors and NGOs. So I will go uh, one by one. The first one is uh, a political and democratic decentralization system. So this system is adopted by uh, central government to make their allies uh, at regional level or at the uh, local level. For example, if you take example of uh, current PTI's government, they have uh, 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 they have their own government in three provinces in, uh, in KP, Punjab and uh, Balochistan. Uh, and uh, there are other provinces uh, where other parties are ruling, like Sindh is ruled by People's Party and GB is ruled by uh, Nawazli, PMLN, and similarly uh, Azad Kashmir is ruled by PMLN as well. But if you look at the Balochistan, uh, where PTI has the government but with the help of uh, other political parties. So they have local uh, partners in, in a political system and they, they have created their government there. So in political or democratic decentralization, uh, central government make allies at the regional or local level and then they delegate or share their powers with them. The second one is administrative power, uh, administrative decentralization. In administrative decentralization, basically um, uh, central government delegates its powers uh, in, at administrative level. For example, um, when central government decided to uh, take some decision in pandemic situation, they actually took decision with the help of local governments. Like they, they negotiate with, uh, uh, negotiated with the provinces and then uh, local governments and then they uh, applied uh, their powers or uh, authority at the local level. The, the third one is uh, co-management. So co-management decentralization works in such a way that um, government or central government actually make partnerships with the, with the private sector or with the local governmental uh, authorities to co-manage some project. So if you look at Karachi, uh, KSC, Karachi Electric, Electricity Supply Corporation, uh, Actually, government has created these uh, partnerships with the local companies to co-manage something. Like in Karachi, I gave you example of Karachi because uh, government is managing electricity supply uh, with the help of a private limited company. And similarly, they have done this in other uh, regions in Pakistan, like uh, in Islamabad, they have uh, ISCO, in Lahore, in Peshawar, they have local electricity companies uh, which are private companies but they are working as a co-management so this is co-management decentralization the fourth one is uh, community management decentralization this is very important especially uh, in the current scenario where government is not only working alone like if you look at the central government it has delegated its power to uh, provinces and even with the local authorities but at the same time government is working with the help of NGOs 
not only the local NGOs but international NGOs as well. So even if you look at, uh, the, the, if you take example of uh, in, in, the, in the normal conditions like polio uh, vaccination, an international NGO, Melinda Gates Foundation, they provide polio vaccine to the government and government actually uh, start this vaccination at local level. They hire people and they, they actually uh, go with the community management system where other NGOs also help them. So there is an international NGO involved in this uh, process and the local NGOs are also involved in this process uh, with the help of uh, central government. And similarly, when we face some kind of disaster like we faced uh, uh, earthquake in 2005 and then we faced floods in uh, 2010 and currently we are fighting uh, with the coronavirus so in these situations government cannot tackle with such disasters all alone they definitely need some help from the community so in this scenario local NGOs are also working in their respective areas and the regional uh, authorities and administrative and political and um, democratic uh, uh, powers are also working with them so it's a it's all managed by community so it's called community management decentralization so these are the four different um, ways of power sharing authority sharing natural resources sharing and uh, uh, and delegating the powers to the local governments and authorities and NGOs and the regional powers so that's it. Uh, I think you have uh, an idea how decentralization works. So uh, as you know, the first assignment I gave you in the first video about the Pakistan. So I, I can give you a lead of uh, current situation. You can write uh, the main idea of decentralization in Pakistan and you can give examples of uh, current pandemic situation like how government is coping with this disaster uh, by uh, sharing its powers, by sharing its authority at the local level or provincial level or with the, uh, with the community level. So just uh, give examples of your own uh, areas or regions and just write, I think um, seven or 800 words will be enough for this assignment so take your time don't worry and uh, just write something uh, whatever you you're watching around and you you must uh, watch news every day so you must know or you must aware of the situation right now so you can give examples of this pandemic situation and connect decentralization process with this situation okay so that's it for today and uh, I'll be available throughout uh, the class time if you have any question or any concern just let me know and uh, it's beginning I know a lot of people are still struggling to uh, handle with the uh, Google Classroom previously they were uh, till, till the last week they were having uh, problems with the LMS system and now they are fighting with the Google Classroom Google Classroom is very easy I think Comparatively, uh, if you compare this with LMS, uh, Google Classroom is much, much easier because you guys must uh, use Google services like email, Gmail or YouTube and uh, other services. So it's easy to handle. If you still can't understand Google Classroom, just go to YouTube and watch some videos. It's easy to understand and there are thousands of videos available on YouTube. To understand Google Classroom so just take uh, take it easy and don't get panic just um, relax and uh, as I said I will I will not put pressure on you guys be relaxed and take your time uh, whenever you have some time you can actually go through these videos and um, uh, I will upload a few more videos for the next week and then uh, we'll take it from there and we'll work together 
and I hope this will not uh, put an extra burden on you guys. Okay, uh, enjoy your time, enjoy your uh, uh, self-isolation or uh, quarantine time at homes and be safe and uh, my best wishes for your health. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. Take care.